What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing. Today we're going to check out the Wham Bam Flex Plate System and we're going to install it on my Ender 3. Welcome back guys. So as I said, this is the Wham Bam Flex Build Plate System. And or Flex Build System they call it. And it consists of three parts. They have a magnetic sheet, a spring steel flex sheet, and then what they have is their PEX, which is a type of polycarbonate build sheet. It's kind of like a PEI, think of it that way, but it's it's polycarbonate, and they call it PEX. So it's supposed to be better, that's what they say, that's why it's called PEX. Better than what you can get with a regular polycarbonate sheet or other systems, so we will see how true that is. I've been playing with this actually since I was started the opening here, and I'm amazed at the how strong the magnet is on this actual uh, spring steel sheet here. It's actually really holds on quite well, and it's a pretty satisfying slap to it once it goes together. Uh, it's it's good. It's not as strong as the Prusa system with their uh, steel sheet, but it is far better than the dual magnet system that the Ender 3 Pro uses, which is a magnet sheet on a magnet bed, and there's different lanes of north and south poles so that they actually will lock together, but that's why you like, kind of like jump when you put it on there. It's horrible, I really don't like it. But I also really don't like that the Ender comes with this polycarbonate sheet. Um, it's not bad, but it's not great. Uh, and I also, I'm not really a fan of this actual, their texture sheet. If you print PLA only, this is for you, 100%. PLA sticks to this like nothing else. It is fantastic for that if you have good first layers. I want to print more than just PLA on this machine. I want to do flexibles. I might want to do some high temperature stuff. And that is why I'm interested in trying out this Wham Bam Flex Plate System. So this sent to me by Peter, who is the owner of Wham Bam Systems. So I appreciate him sending it out to me so I could try it out. And we're going to go ahead through their build guide and install it. And their build guide is very simple. It comes with it just here. They also do have it on their website as well. It tells you what all comes in this kit and then this one page of instructions. Basically, we're going to have to clean off the bed the bare aluminum sheet. We're gonna make sure that's nice and straight, or flat, I should say. We'll get out a steel ruler, and I'll verify that is that. They do give you some aluminum shims if you do need to fix that anywhere. Then we're gonna stick down the magnet nice and easily, make sure we don't have any air bubbles in that, and get that down. Then we will apply this to it just to kind of hold it, and on top of this build plate, we are gonna then apply their PX sheet again, nice and easy and slow, to ensure we don't get any air bubbles in that. It's easier to do, I've done this on small sheets before, on small build plates, it's not that bad. On like a 300, like for the FT5 or any of the CR10 variants, it's really hard to apply a PEI type sheet or any type of build sheet on an area that big, especially when it's thin and have not have air bubbles in it. So that is a common problem, but I should be able to do it with this one, uh, hopefully without too much of a problem. So that's those pieces, the aluminum shims, and they give you some steel wool, which I was very confused as this popped out. This is the last thing loaded in the box, first thing to come out. And this is what you're supposed to scratch up the PEX surface with, and then use some IPA on it, and then it is good to print on. And if you ever start to losing adhesion on it, you're supposed to go ahead and scratch up a little bit more with this or 400 grit sandpaper, wipe it down again, and you should be good to go. So that is definitely different than PEI. I've seen some people actually scratch up PEI. I've seen a lot of people not do that. I personally do not scratch up PEI. I, If I need any extra adhesion for like flexibles or you don't want the flexible to adhere to that, put down a layer of glue stick and then it works just fine. So I think that's enough gabbing. I'm gonna go ahead and start looking at the bed and make sure it's flat and let's get this installed. And I want to print with this super quick because I want to try it out. Onward. It's pretty flat. There's a tiny dip in the middle, but I think I'm gonna be okay without putting these in. I don't think these shims are gonna be that necessary. The bed is pretty flat. But I think with the compensation of, I mean, it's been printing just fine now. So I think it'll be okay. He did also recommend in the build guide, if you want to go ahead and put a lock nut underneath the screws to kind of hold in place because you can't have access to the top here. Again, I don't really want to mess with the springs at all. I think it's going to be fine just like that. If not, I can always add those on later if it doesn't work out. But I want to go ahead and get the actual build mat installed. So first we're going to use a little bit of we're gonna get a blue shop cloth here. And I'm gonna get out my 
uh, Windex type cleaner and I'm going to go ahead and clean this off just to be sure there's nothing on there and that it's nice and clean. I don't want any dust particles or anything on there. It's usually pretty clean anyways because I keep my build plate on it. But either way, we just want to have the best adhesion we can with that magnetic sheet. I don't want any issues with that coming off later because then that's no bueno. All right, so before we actually start, we just want to make sure this actually fits our bed just in case they sent the wrong one. So if we throw this down on here, we see that it is a perfect match for the Ender 3. That's what the build size is. I'm going to wipe that bed down one more time now just because I put that on there. Now, the way to apply this is to peel back about an inch, two inches off the top here, and we're going to keep the Wham Bam logo facing forward. I'm going to peel off some of this and line it up in the back and then go forward with it. So this will take a little bit of finesse here. I'm off by a hair on one side. But that's okay, it's not that big of a deal. But that is on there nice and super flat. Just want to verify. That actually took up a lot of the space there. Pretty fantastic actually. It's not too bad. Let's see what this feels like attaching to it. Slaps right down on there. That holds on pretty good. <laughs> it really does. Here it is. Honestly, surprising. I guess not surprising. A lot of people rave about this system, so it's not really surprising. It's just nice to see. All right, so now with this one, before I put on the, Paul, the PEX sheet, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wipe this down. I'm going to install it on this, just like this, because this is going to hold the build plate stable for me, and I don't want to worry about it uh, moving at all while I'm installing this. So I'm going to clean this off, and we'll get that installed. And for this, I just did that with Windex and that's taken care of, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of alcohol just to make sure there's no extra anything left over from the Windex on it, because sometimes Windex can leave a little bit of a residue. So we'll use the a little bit of, well, kind of a large splash of rubbing alcohol and that will get rid of anything on this build plate. We'll be good to go. Super clean. All right, now again with their logo up to the front, we're gonna go ahead and install this. Yeah, this 3M uh, that they're using is, uh, yeah, once you start, there's, there's honestly no real going back. Oh man, that could not get much better. That is not too bad at all. So I'm gonna get something, uh, I think I have uh, something around here, a credit card or something that I can use to help flatten that out a little bit. But bam, there it is. This is super shiny. So sorry if that gets into the camera's eye. There was one little speck that ended up getting in there, but that's okay. Everything else is pretty spot on. That's basically it. That took all of, like honestly, like maybe five minutes of work. But that was super duper easy to do. So now, you know, before we do our first print, obviously we need to re-level the bed. That's obviously rule number one, need to re-level the bed, make sure everything looks okay. I did jack this wheel up a little bit. We're going to steel wool this down and then I will use some alcohol again and I will clean this bed off again. That'll do, Dragon. Smidge of this. And wham bam. That's on there. Let's get this bed level and try to print out.
So I got two prints on white cams on the second row because this is gonna take a couple hours and I wanna get this done in one night. I don't feel like waiting the whole night. And this is not a review of the actual system. That's gonna take like a couple hundred hours of prints for me to actually make that determination. Or at least, yeah, at least several dozen more at least. But so I did the Marvin first. He turned out just fine. Um, you can definitely see the color distillation in him just because I had a green film loading before and it didn't fully get out. But other than that, the print quality is fantastic. The tough extruder from TH3D did not disappoint. So that did a great job. And now let's go ahead and pull this off. Uh, it, it kind of mostly cooled. It's down to 42 degrees, I think it said before I turned it off. And you kind of can see, you can just kind of, uh, just pops right off of there. Marvin didn't take any work at all. That just comes right off. That's it. So I can easily just slide this right back on here. And get some more. Print's going, because that was pretty easy. Can't lie. On the bottom surface, everything looks to be perfect. Bed leveling was really good. You get a really nice shiny finish on this, but also a mirror finish. That's a nice thing about having like this, again, this PEX or PEI sheath. It really does give you that beautiful, just perfectly glass smooth layer. You get the same thing with glass, but PEI will grip a little bit more to other materials than just glass will. So you do get some advantage with that. I still prefer to print on glass, but having this really does make it a lot easier. And again, you can print a lot more materials and not have to worry about it grabbing onto those build mats, which is a huge problem. A lot of people have they end up ripping it. Uh, that can even be a problem on ultra base sometimes, where you don't really have the problem here. Put a layer of glue stick down, or Magi Goo, or hairspray. I don't recommend hairspray, but anything as an interface layer between the PEI and the flexible material or a PETG material, and it'll hold like nothing else. And we take it off; it's very easy, especially with a flexible build plate like this. I think that was pretty good. Easy, took all of what, five, maybe 10 minutes to install, made sure it was, bed was level, and I was off printing. Can't really argue with an easy upgrade like that. Again, this polycarbonate sheet on the Ender 3 is not horrible, but it's not great. It's definitely better than what you get on the Pro. So this actually would be an excellent, excellent upgrade for the Ender 3 Pro or any other build. I actually almost wanted to get one of these for the Alpha Wise U30, which prints great, but it has just a solid glass sheet with a or it just has a solid sheet of glass with a build mat on top of it. It's not particularly grippy, but when you're too close, you really screw it up. And I think that this system would actually be a huge benefit to that uh, printer. So that's it guys. Again, very simple and easy to do. If you guys wanna check this out, I'll put a link to the Wham Bam System website down below. It's not affiliate link or anything like that. Uh, they just sent this to me to try out on my printer. And I really wanted to, again, on these Ender printers because I don't like this. So I thank them for saying that over here. And again, if you wanna check it out, go down below. And that's gonna be it guys. So if you wanna check this out, head down below. I'll put a link down there. It's not affiliate link or anything like like that they just sent over me to check it out so i appreciate them helping the channel out and i appreciate them letting me try out their product which personally i think is pretty good so far so all i have to do now is put a couple more hundred hours on this printer and we'll see how it turns out so make sure you guys are subscribed for that and with that i thank you guys for watching so please hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video if not thumbs down either way talk in the comments down below if you guys have tried this out and it works for you if it doesn't work for you i'd love to hear from you guys if you want to stay tuned what's going on again make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon become part of the notification squad i appreciate that if you guys feel the desire to help me out financially there's a patreon link down below me so click on that or you can do some one-time donations down the in the video description or again there'll be some affiliate links with some coupon codes down there you can check out save yourself some money a little slice which you buy with those links comes back here to help out the channel so thank you guys for watching until next time happy friends